I guess I'm a materials nut. I collected rocks from an early age and I've always felt an affinity with materials. I guess the clay goes hand in hand with that. My favourite subjects at school were art and chemistry and I'm still doing them. And um, it's, I mean, I love my job. My name is Simon Rees and I'm an artist, primarily ceramic. When I was at college, I gained an interest in Japanese ceramics and I really wanted to go there. Luckily, I was able to go and I found a teacher in a place called Bizen. He was happy to show me all the tableware and the tea ceremony stuff, but also he took me to an exhibition of a fellow called Suzuki Osamu, who was part of an avant-garde movement. We went to the show and it blew my mind and it really turned my head around into thinking about what um, the potentials were for sculpture within the medium. I think the material and the ability to manipulate the material and the touch, the feel, the sensation is all part of the process for me. I use a number of local clays and I mix it with other clays and create what's called my own clay body. I make up all my own glazes. I've got an old corn shredder that I use as a rock crusher. I use the ash from our wood heater, mixing my glazes. So anything that's either forcing change or looking at medium and ways of doing things that can be shifted, I think that's what I find interesting. The potter's wheel can be a reasonably meditative experience, but also you need to be focused when you're doing it. A lot of people who start off on the wheel think that you need a whole pile of strength, but it's not about that. It's about body movement, it's about using your weight in conjunction with this machine that's creating this force. So the beauty of it is, is that you're working with this other force and the platelets of the clay are sliding like this with the moisture in between them and then all of a sudden they miraculously come up. It's pretty cool. The clay will move for you. It'll do what you want, but then it'll reject you at times as well. You might make something and then you'll find that with drying, firing, it'll change. Things morph, they crack, they blow up. Um, shit happens. <laughs> Ready to start tomorrow? Can light her up. I think the serendipity that exists within the process is probably for me one of the most alluring parts of it. Even though opening the kiln sometimes is fraught. Well, I, I always sort of think of it as Christmas. You never know what presents you're going to get. And, you know, sometimes you're exceedingly happy about the presents that you receive, and other times they're, they're duds. What do you think? Eh, interesting. Those yeah, things that happen that you did not expect to happen are often the things that take you down another rabbit hole. Clay is often a really hard master, but I keep coming back to it, so, you know, and I can't not use the stuff. Mm. Hear that? It's very vitrified, the clay. Humans have been using clay for tens of thousands of years. Do you ever think about that when you're working? Yeah, look, I, I think there's a certain tangible lineage that you're part of. You know, and look, I mean, you know, like you fire something to, you know, 1300 degrees C, it's going to be around for a while. You know, it's one of the things that people do dig up later on. So I, I don't know whether that sort of means that you have a responsibility, but it's something that you 
consider. Yeah. It's always good, Zoc. It's mm. always good. <laughs> <laughs> it's never bad, man. It's always good. It always keeps you guessing. And that keeps you going. That's funny.